Hi everyone, Julie here from K&J Adventures and today I wanted to share with you five tips for truck topper camping. In the fall of 2014, with the help of some friends, I built out a camper in the back of my Chevy pickup with a truck topper on it. I drove from the East Coast to the West Coast and back 10,000 miles through 27 beautiful states over the course of 42 days. Let's get right to it. Number one, some of the best things about camping in a truck topper camper. Well, it was fun and it was stealth and it was pretty fuel efficient. I really did enjoy staying in the back of my pickup truck for a camping adventure. It was much easier than a tent because if the weather was bad or if I was just tired and didn't feel like setting it up, it was so easy. I just crawled around and I was in my little house. It worked out perfectly for me. And another thing is I imagine wanting all the amenities of a big RV and who doesn't really want all the amenities of a big RV, but they're expensive, they're not fuel efficient, they're not very stealth, and sometimes they're hard to get into some of the national or state parks if uh, they're too lengthy. And difficulty boondocking and sort of navigating and negotiating traffic situations. And as it turns out, I grew quite fond of the idea of a more stealth-like, easy to boondock camping experience. Number two. There's some important basic items that I think people should have with them for truck topper camping. A single burner stove, as well as something for your power needs, a battery setup or a solar setup or whatever works for you, and also heating and cooling. Whether it's fans or heaters or a ventilation system, those are some key factors that you're going to need to have on board when you're in a truck topper. Three, items that I packed that I actually didn't find very useful. Firstly, was a porta potty. Uh, it seemed like a practical inclusion at the beginning, but really, it wasn't really necessary for this type of road trip because I was always moving along and often stayed at a truck stop where there were services available all night. And if I stayed at a Lowe's or a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel that wasn't open all night long, I usually just sort of uh, went easy on the beverages after dinner, and that turned out to work out good for me. So I moved it around a lot, it took up a lot of space, and it turns out it really wasn't necessary at all. Number two, I had some battery power in the back of the truck wired in with some 12 volt outlets. But in addition, I bought this big 30 pound five in one battery pack. And as it turned out, again, it was heavy to move. It took up a lot of space. And because I was driving all during the days, my battery, extra battery was always charged up. And I never needed more than that one battery at night to do some basic things like recharge cameras, other electronics, and maybe even watch like a DVD during the night. So that battery pack for me was not uh, convenient to sort of move around a lot and I didn't need those extra power needs. And also food. I packed enough food for like the apocalypse and you can shop on the road every you know two to three days. Apparently there's lots of food in America and it took up a lot of space and it didn't really help as far as having to move it, move it out, move it in, and the cooler was always full and so I would change by not planning to bring as much food in the beginning. Okay, number four, what were some of the best and worst camping locations? Truck stops can really be a good and a bad when it comes to overnight camping. For me, they were all good. I love that they're open 24 hours. I felt they were pretty safe places to stay. All the amenities were available to me. I could have a shower for $11 on an overnight, or if I needed to do laundry, they had coin up laundry in many of the bigger truck stops as well. It was kind of fun being in there with all the truckers on the road that I'd sort of been driving with all day long, a bit of camaraderie. I got some uh, great directions and also um, some neat things to see on the road from other travelers, both RVs and truckers that were on the road. And because I was in a pickup truck and not an RV, I was able to go to the auto section where it was just kind of quieter. So that was a big advantage. It made the truck stops a really good stop for me. But for a lot of people, the noise in a truck stop prevents them from making it a good place for them to stop. So that one could sort of be good or bad. Uh, other places to stay that I think are sort of all good are Walmarts and Lowe's and Home Depot and Cracker Barrel. And I followed the usual etiquette of going in and talking to the management to see if it was okay to stay there for the night. And with like Lowe's and Depot, I got free Wi-Fi all night long. So I really enjoyed that. And I think common sense locations is sort of the big one. On the downside, really, it's a matter of if you're picking a location that just doesn't feel right in your gut. And I've heard a lot of people say that online, and I would just agree with that. Stay with the big locations. And I think if you're going to be stealth and parking on the street or in a neighborhood, you really have to be sure about what you're doing and make sure that you have a sense of safety. And for me, I didn't carry any big weapons or a knife or anything. I had some pepper spray, which I got on the advice of a friend. And uh, pretty much if I had anything else, I'm pretty sure it'd be used against me because of my lack of experience. But mostly trust your gut 
when you're boondocking anywhere in America, and that will serve you well. I would target using a campground like every third day or so because I could do laundry, get showers. I knew I'd have pretty much guaranteed Wi-Fi if they advertised it. Number five, the most helpful ideas that I got from other YouTubers, which really made a difference in making my trip better. There were so many good ideas that I got from watching YouTube videos, and I appreciate everybody that uploaded all their awesome creations in the back of a tr pickup truck so that others of us could learn from you. Some of the things that were most helpful were the design process and the amenities that one might want to have in the back of a pickup truck. So firstly, regarding the design process, I found that to be key. When I was finished with my project, because I'd spent a lot of time, it was exactly how I wanted it to be. I had those right amount of space for headroom, right amount of space for storage, and space to the sides of the platform bed for storage. And I realized when the project was done that had I not spent all the time in the measurements and the planning, it wouldn't have come out exactly the way that I had hoped for. So plan, plan, plan. That's a good way to do it. Take lots of measurements, draw pictures, and imagine what you want to have in your dream truck bed camper. Also, I learned ways to modify my truck to have power needs with, uh, with a battery wired in and how I could charge that while I was traveling. I also learned how to insulate my pickup truck with Reflectix. I learned that Velcro uh, can be almost as good as uh, duct tape when you're attaching things inside a truck topper if you have a headliner. Also, privacy blinds for boondocking. How important it was to be able to block out all the light if you were in there at night reading or watching a DVD so that nobody knew you were there. That's the whole point of being a stealth boondocker. So curtains were a huge deal. And it also was important for me to have them insulated because I knew I was going to be traveling in some of the colder weather. And the other thing that I picked up was someone that had put a pole with a hook on the end of it. And when I was fishing out my suitcases at the deep end of the truck, I could just put the pole down, hook the case, and bring it out. Um, that guy should get like the Nobel Peace Prize or something because that saved me uh, a lot of hassle getting stuff from under the bed. And I appreciated so many things from other people's videos, but those were a few that just sort of come off the top of my head and uh, it made for a great trip for me. Now lastly, some of my final thoughts. I love traveling cross country in a pickup truck. It turned out to be a really great experience and I loved seeing different parts of America that I hadn't been exposed to and it was a real fun experience for me. And although my space was small, I had a lot of amenities and I have to say that it gave me some inspirations for my future and I'll be sharing some of my new topper upgrades with you in the near future. So stay tuned to K&J Adventures. And also I learned a lot about the different regions of America, histories of like mining and the Civil War and some of the economic industries that are different. I just gotta say, I, I really enjoyed it. I loved hearing from people and going to different museums, big and small, and just understanding the country I live in a little more meant an awful lot to me. I also learned how to upload a YouTube video and I did so because of all the people that came before me and shared their ideas, I was inspired to try and share my own. And it was like slightly less complicated than brain surgery for a non-millennial to figure out how to use this technology. But I'm happy that I did and I'm so appreciative of the people that have watched my videos, shared some comments and especially to my subscribers because I gotta let you know that some weeks when you're struggling with the technology and figuring out what to upload next and doing all this crazy editing and learning an editing program, it's like an inspiration to see one more subscriber that day. And it's really kept me going when sometimes I'm frustrated trying to figure out how this works. But the YouTube community has been terrific and I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for watching my videos and thank you for subscribing to K&J Adventures. Have a great day and happy camping. So, for that reason, oh, this is much harder than I imagined. Oh. I really enjoyed at the end of the day not, not having a da, da, da. I used to have lots of tents to set up to go camping, and I. And take it a little easy with that. That's close, but not quite. Items like a single burner stove and something else I can't think of. Why does this look so easy when everybody else does it on YouTube? <sighs> Firstly, was a porta potty. As it turns out, I could save me from myself. Ooh. <sighs> Take number 52. Truck stops, they can be Ugh. Ugh.